Hello, I'm Guy, and I will want to talk to you today about change detector tests. Well, what are change detector tests? Uh, those are tests that break for any non-trivial change in your code. So in a sense, they don't really check for correctness because they always break. And that's why they're usually considered bad tests. Well, I'm here to tell you that sometimes, when done appropriately, they do make sense. Let's give you an example. Uh, let's say you have an AI pet image classifier. It's a classifier, it gets a picture of a pet, and it tells you whether that pet is a cat or a dog. Uh, yay, we want to test that classifier. Now, of course, that classifier is not 100% accurate. It makes mistakes sometimes, and it has a performance which is a measure of how well it classifies things. We give it a lot of images, we measure the performance, and now we want to test to fail if it's bad. But what does that mean? There is no real concept of bad for this. I mean, you could be worse than you were before, but you could be different. Uh, so I claim there is no real test, especially if your classifier will evolve over time and the performance will increase, hopefully increase. So I suggest we create a human readable string, like an actual string with all string stream, like you write debug code, and add that to the test as a change detector. If that string ever changes, if that description of the performance ever changes, that test fails. Of course, that means that every time you update the classifier, the test will fail. But I say that's a good thing. For one, it's a test that's easy to fix. You just copy the string from the error message, you copy it here, it's fixed, yay. But now, and that's the important thing, the change in performance is part of the code review. The reviewers get to look at it and make informed decision that depend on the context as to whether that change is good or not. For example, they might say, oh, I see you fixed the cat classifier. It's now better than it was before, but you slightly re regressed the dog classifier. This might be okay, but let's have a meeting about this and discuss it. Another example, metrics. We know metrics. Metrics tell us the inner, inner state of our system, and they're orthogonal to whether the system works or not. These are very important numbers. They're so important, we buy huge LCD monitors, put them in our rooms, and just to display real-time values for these metrics. And those metrics are kind of magic. It, it's more an art than a science to understand them. They're very important to tell us the health of the system, and we want to test them. So we run our code, we get the metrics, and now we need something to decide whether this magic, these magical values are correct or not. And I say there is no real way of checking that. It really depends on the context. So what we do usually is we create a human readable string out of those metrics with some context on top for the users, for the users, for the reviewers to see, to get the context of what they're looking at. And then they can usually say something like, yeah, that's just random changes, well, that's fine, let's just accept it and, and move on. But sometimes they might say something interesting like, hey, why are the cache hits so much higher than they used to be? Why are the cache misses so much lower? I mean, any automatic tool will tell you that better cache hits and, 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 and less cache misses is a good thing, but I don't see anything in your code changes that would do something like that. That smells weird to me. I, I don't like it. Let's, let's check it. Let's make sure everything's okay before we submit. And that's something an automatic tool would never be able to do. So that's... So why use change detector tests? Sometimes there is no real right answer. It's just what's the current state of things, and we need to make a soft decision as to what is acceptable, what change in the current state is a good change versus a bad change. Usually, it's done only by the developer. You know, he programs a little bit, he adds debug prints, he looks at it and says, hmm, yeah, I think that's okay, let's push it. I want to move that from being only by the developer to move those soft decisions into the code review, so the reviewers will get to do that decision. That means those tests need to be reviewer friendly. A reviewer needs to look at them and make a decision, but because those tests break so often, you review them a lot of times, they have to be reviewer friendly. We do that by summarizing them in human readable strings, uh, and that gives us the benefit of having historic performance in our code repository for every snapshot. Bye.